chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness. And I think for a lot of us, we get inspired to do this, even if it's something very briefly that you see when you're younger. Actor, pro wrestler, athlete, you know, for you anime mofos, it's a cartoon. But no matter how you got here, you got here. And aside from the physical changes that you're seeking, perhaps the biggest thing that is a motivator and a driver of gym progress is the fact that you want to be treated differently by people. In your head, it's all going to be assumed to be good. When it's like, oh man, everybody's going to see my great physique and they're going to be so impressed with me. And as a guy especially, right, you're gonna command more respect. The first way though that people are gonna start treating you differently is pretty inconsequential, I think, but it can get pretty annoying. And that's gonna be in the form of commenting on the fact that you are very into this now. So comment down below if you have gotten some variation of this comment. You're eating chicken again? And you're like, yeah. And you, after a while, like, you know, I understand there's kind of poking fun at people and teasing and whatever, especially among family members and friends, right? But after a bit, it's like, can you come up with some new material? Is this all you have? You are not only going to be, even if it's just sort of made fun of, but people are going to comment on you becoming into this lifestyle a lot. Some of it is gonna be positive. Some people are gonna be like, oh, wow, you look better. I noticed this, like, it takes a lot of commitment. Some people are very, very encouraging about it. Other people are more neutral. They might not even say anything. Other people might just not understand it. Some people might give you some flack for it. That's always fun to deal with. You know, they're like, oh, what do you think? You're better than me. You know, that typical line, or it's like, oh, you're going to the gym again, right? So, I mean, it is going to bother some people. Once again, I mean, if it's a family member that you can't really escape, you'll get over it. So will they eventually, you think? And it's sort of tune them out, really. But that's just the tip of the iceberg because you're really going to get this whenever you're dealing with social situations. So you are going out to eat and your family and friends were like, what, you're getting a chicken salad, that type of thing. Or maybe you're even meal prepping and you're hanging out with your friends and you pull out some Tupperware and they're all just staring at you as if you're a Martian. Your friends want to order pizza, go get fast food, go to the convenience store after you get drunk and high and get a bunch of snacks. And in the same token as well, once you start making a lot of time to go to the gym, that also is going to throw some things off. Even on a typical Friday or Saturday night, right? I mean, the average person is not exercising or lifting at all, but God forbid they do it on a night whenever you're supposed to be out drinking or partying. I mean, that is like, that's not even a foreign concept. That makes their brain short circuit. And this is not to say that you can't have a social life and be serious about the gym, obviously, even though a lot of you don't. I don't have a huge one myself either, I get it. I'm just not an extremely social person, I never was, so this doesn't affect me as much. But if you are a more extroverted social type of person, you are in all likelihood going to lose some degree of friends because of this, and that is what it is, it's fine. I mean, realistically, if you are very talkative, you're going to just replace your old friends with the people you meet in the gym. So you've probably gotten some level of noticeable gains up to this point. And I've said before, guys, keep in mind your novice gains, even if they're very underwhelming to you in comparison to what you see online, the average person, especially your family and friends, they notice your novice gains. Believe me, they absolutely do. Even if you really don't, normal people that aren't totally body dysmorphic like we are, they know what's going on. So the next big area is going to be the respect that you're gonna get. So it's sort of an evolutionary thing, right? Like you see somebody who's jacked enter a room and even if you're not really scared of them, you know, your brain kind of has this thing where it's like, okay, right? Like that person, you just kind of acknowledge that they're there. You know, you see a lot of stuff online about how it's like a well-built physique is a status symbol, all this other stuff, which is true. But in my experience, it's not gonna be that huge of a deal Right? I mean, there might be the odd person that is intimidated by you. Some of you are just so corny and goofy, that's just never going to happen. But if you have a more serious demeanor about you, especially if you have a more kind of resting bitch face, I think I tend to have that, I've been told, which I absolutely believe. You know, some people might kind of think you are aggressive or mean or something. Even if you're not, they just may perceive you that way. But once they talk to you, they will actually see how you are. But in terms of having a more built physique, I'd say people are less likely to try you, which that's why a lot of guys who get bullied whenever they're young, and that's why they go into the gym, even if they don't learn how to formally fight, you just wanna look like you're a threat. That's really what it is, because the fighters always love to talk about how it's like, oh, well, this guy's big and buff, but those muscles aren't functional, and this and that, 
and you're not going to win a fight if this it's like yeah okay right i mean obviously just because you have a lot of size to you doesn't mean you're great at fighting you know you see these videos of fights online i'd say for the most part alcohol is going to be involved right i don't think sober people generally are going to be throwing hands with each other unless you come from one of these downtrodden ass neighborhoods or cultures or something you're probably not going to be getting into a whole lot of fights i would assume also your demeanor because some guys are hotheads that's where the whole roid rage comes from it's really guys who are hotheads to begin with then they take stuff that amplifies the aggression then they really become hotheads but for the most part even really you know jacked up roided up guys a lot of them are big teddy bears you know what i mean so this is something a lot of guys fantasize about i think you know they want to have that moment where it's like all right they punch the bully in the face or they choke him out or you know there's like a girl they're into and the suave pickup artist player guy is trying to mack on her and you come in and save the day and then you sweep her off her feet and carry her away right just in terms of general respect how people perceive you having muscle definitely does not hurt i don't think it makes as huge of a difference as some people would lead you to believe but it definitely does not hurt. And once you get bigger too, you're more likely to be asked to help move furniture. Some people might be like, hey, how many push-ups can you do? Or some guys, oh, this one, guys might ask to arm wrestle you. That one is just so ridiculous. Are you an arm wrestle bro? All this other stuff. That stuff to me is very corny. I don't really like the whole like public display of strength thing outside of the gym context, right? You know, you see these clips of lifters online, right? Whenever they'll be at something that has nothing to do with lifting and they'll just start cranking out pull-ups on some support beam you're at some guy in like a shirt and tie or some woman in a dress. I've seen clips of people at the airport. They're like, I'm going to do a hit circuit before I get on the plane. You get all sweaty and musty. And I mean, you can do whatever you want, man. I'm kind of just riffing here, but that's always been very weird to me, man. It's like, that's one thing about being a guy, especially when women do it, it's kind of fun because they're not expected to be muscular. But as a guy, man, that makes you look very bad. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you are a buff dude, and you're constantly trying to prove how buff you are, right? Like you're always posturing and doing this and invisible lat syndrome. If you're a very buff dude and then you come off as really corny and try hard and stuff, oh yeah, people are gonna roast you, man. You're gonna get a lot of respect lost. So just keep that in mind, man. Don't do all this goofy stuff if you're trying to be taken seriously. Even with the physique, man, you get a big buff corny guy, <laughs> the muscles aren't gonna save you, buddy. And that goes on to the last topic here something you guys probably want to really hear about. How's it going to go with the girls? Because I've talked about before, man, whether guys admit it or not, we all like lifting in some form for the women. These guys come online and act like, oh, I've never touched a weight for women. I don't even think about women, all this other stuff. These guys act like, you know, they're so above their libido and everything. Some of the retention dudes, right? Listen, man, there's no shame in saying that you like when girls like your muscles. Okay, like, I don't know why guys have such a hard time admitting this. And that's the old meme about lifting, right? You start out to get girls, then after a few years, you're examining the striations on other guys' glutes, right? That's just how it goes. But what a lot of guys think is going to happen is that they're going to get these muscles, and then women are going to just be feeling them up and touching them and approaching them and messaging them, all this other stuff. That can and does happen, guys. Now, the flip side of that, because I see a lot of comments like this too, guys will say muscles don't help at all. It doesn't matter at all. Both of those are wrong. There is a fair amount of variance on this topic, and it's going to really depend on the woman herself. I see this constantly because there will be some video where some woman says like, oh, well, I don't care about muscles. And they'll say, see, women don't care about muscles. And it's like, okay, she probably doesn't. Maybe the women that relate to her don't, but that doesn't mean that there aren't women that care about muscles. And it's like anything else. There's a bell curve. So in the middle, that's where most women are going to fall. They will typically like what's called the swimmer's physique, Something similar, right? I mean, as I talked about earlier, guys, once you have your novice gains, especially if you're on the leaner side, right? Like your shoulders are starting to show a bit, your arms are, that's plenty for the average woman. Like she doesn't really care about muscles beyond that. That is going to help you though. You can look at photos of celebrities and women are going to constantly be saying things like, oh, well, he's a hunk. You know, look at those muscles, right? Even if the celebrity is not even that really muscular, that's what women perceive that as because they're more muscular than the average dude. So that's going to be somewhere in the middle, leaner, somewhat muscular. That's fine. I mean, you're going to be good. If you want to just talk about getting the most amount of women possible based on pure numbers, that's all you care about. You don't need to go seriously into the gym. I mean, you can go and really enjoy it, but you don't have to get really, really big and extremely strong and all this other stuff. You don't have to go on these insane bulks and all this stuff, man, just to get the average nice muscular physique that most women like, not terribly, terribly hard for a lot of guys. You could get that in 
two to four years depending on your genetics so you see some women say stuff like i prefer the dad bod which even then that's very gray because the definition of a dad bod varies a lot i don't think any woman likes an out of shape dude very blah they would take the more muscular guy over that i'd say probably nine out of ten times but similar to the women in the middle and at the low end of the bell curve too they don't like the guys that are in bodybuilding if you're talking like ripped up fitness model, crazy abs, veins everywhere. On this bell curve, probably 20% of women are less actually like that. The girls that are into bodybuilding and into serious muscle mass, a lot of them compete themselves or train seriously themselves. But in terms of the overall percentage of women who are going to be into that, it is pretty darn small. The biggest thing with women beyond the muscle and the physique is going to be how you look in the face. There is variance, okay? Some women care about height more than others. Some women care about the size of the muscles more than others. You know, these dudes think that you have to be like the Giga Chad meme in human form for women to really be attracted to you. That is just evidently not the case. So in my experience, once I got some noticeable muscles, I would get touched whenever I was out at the bar. Maybe a girl in class, if you sat by her and you started talking, she might just casually, women like to do this, they might just touch your arm. And now that I think about it, I was harassed two times that I can remember at the job, two different places. So one, I was in a restaurant and it was in this confined little room where we had a bunch of glasses and silverware and stuff. And I was kind of up against the wall getting something. And the one woman who was a hostess, she was entering from behind me. So she said, oh, excuse me. And she kind of went horizontally to fit through. And she felt up my traps in my shoulders and she went, ooh, and just went away. And, you know, as a young dude, especially because this was a few years ago, you know, that's a big, you're like, oh yeah, right. You're the man when that happens. You know what I mean? Then in hindsight, you're like, I could have probably sued them. And the second time was at a gym and the one woman who was a manager, some guy was causing a commotion upstairs and she came up to me and she's like, Matt, can you go check what's going on upstairs? And she just touched my arm, like not even subtle. She literally just was like, and I was like, uh, sure. You also might experience things to where you might get messages from girls. I'd say it's more likely to happen from girls that you know or they know you a little bit you know like the thing where you go to the same school and you follow each other just because that's what everybody does but you've never really talked a whole lot you start to change your physique her and her friends are like oh wow he's getting a little bit hotter right you may get a message from a girl like that maybe she starts liking your pictures especially if you have a major glow up like maybe you were dating a girl you guys broke up she went to find chad or whatever right and then you have your own glow up she might hit you back up after a while because she sees you're changing too. As an average guy at this point on dating apps, I mean, those are pretty much finished, at least in the United States. Those are useless now. But I can tell you in all my experiences with women, they have never only complimented my muscles. And the thing is, if they like your muscles, man, they will talk about it a lot. They will say, oh my God, your arms look so good. Oh my goodness, your back is so wide. Some girls that are very into the gym lifestyle too, they'll even talk about your legs. I know a lot of guys are like, women don't care about legs, bro. The girls that are into the gym scene heavy, yes, they do. The thing with general muscles too, they're very helpful in quick hookup type of scenarios. So a bar, a party, maybe you're on vacation. Muscles are great in that context because if she just finds you attractive and it's going to be a short-term thing, even if you might think it's going to be a long-term thing. By the way, click my video in the top corner. Some of you guys need to understand the reality of that situation too, but it's really good for those type of scenarios. In the broader context of dating a woman seriously, I mean, the muscles are going to help definitely if she's into that, but the value of them is going to go down less and less, I would say, the longer that you know somebody. That's something with women too. Once you do have muscles, they're more than likely going to boost your confidence, even if indirectly, just because you feel better about yourself. So even if everything else is equal, your face looks the same, your height's the same, same haircut, whatever, just having a, even if it's a slightly better physique, that might make you more sociable, more likely to go approach a woman, all these other things. Even you might be more likely to shoot a DM to a girl. You shoot your shot, even if you miss, you still went for it, right? That's better than regretting it, I would say without a doubt. So in that aspect too, having muscles is going to make you more confident, not even just with women, just generally, maybe even negotiating with other people, going back to the prior example as well. You kind of get perceived as more valid of a man, especially when you have a nicer physique. But I think that's what this really comes down to. If you have a face that women are attracted to and a body that they like, you're going to be in a very good position. So if they find you attractive, but you have some muscles, that can even serve as an icebreaker. 
right? So they might be like, so like you must go to the gym, right? Or it's like, oh, what are you, a bodybuilder? So if you're a guy that is say mid in the face, but you have a really nice physique, that is going to help you. And then the more attractive a woman perceives you facially, the less you need to have a nicer body, I would say, for her to want to pursue you. I don't think it's a bad idea to try and just niche max. Meaning, if you're a short dude and you've pretty much had nothing going on up to this point, or maybe you're a dude that's markedly ugly, which you know it's hard to define, I know, but just loosely speaking here, I don't think it's a bad idea if you're seriously into the gym and lifting. Why not get big as hell? Why not try it, right? Because you see some of these dudes online, they're bodybuilders, they're very short guys, they're jacked as hell, but they do have a girlfriend or a wife. Now you can debate, like, does she actually care about him, all this other stuff, right? I mean, we could go on all day about that. But there is a woman there, if nothing else, which is better than you were doing before. So if you're a guy that facially doesn't have a lot going on, height-wise, very subpar, I think that's something worth trying at least. Like, if you've got realistically nothing to lose in terms of dating, why not go for that? And some people would say that's not a good idea, but... Have your other ideas worked? But this has been it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to grab your program down below at revivalfitness.org slash programs. Get on a routine that is going to get you serious gains. With less time in the gym, stop spinning your wheels if you have been. You can get in direct contact with me below on Patreon for one-on-one -on -one conversation, as well as joining our Discord server. Hundreds of other members in there right now and save money on some other great products and services. And I will catch you guys next time.